All right, now what we're going to talk about is getting a, the most inexpensive second light. It's called a reflector. Think of the things that we've done with Nellie before. She's back on the set with us. Think of the things we've done before. We had a lot of shadows on the other side of the face. Well, what if it, you think there's too much shadows? All right. Well, one of the things you can do is you can get a free second light by using a reflector. These were very, very widely used in the studio. They're very, very inexpensive, which is why so many people like them. You can get them from around $30 to probably $50 or $60. So the com most commonly used one is probably silver on one side and white on the other, or silver on one side and gold on the other. When do you use which color and what? And I'm just going to grab one from Brad here. Oh, here's one right here. I have one right here on the set. So this is a reflector. I'm going to put my camera down for just a moment. And the nice thing about these is they're very compact. They just pack right up into a little circle. When you need them, they flop open. So uh, the silver side is normally what we use in the studio. The reason why is because the light in the studio is very kind of white. It's very bright white light. So we're going to use silver. When you go outside, the sunlight is warmer. That's when you use gold. Now, white is normally used. If you're going to use the other side, we use white because you'll use that with product photography. Product photography, they, they use, it's also very common for product photographers to actually just use white cardboard, get a piece of white uh, foam core from the local store and just stick it right up there. All right, this is one of the, uh, this one's by Westcott, and again, this is probably about, uh, what, 36 inches, something like that, 28 inches, don't really know, but anyway. But they pop up, they, they store in these little cases. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to take a shot of Nelly without a reflector, we're going to have her kind of hold that same pose. I'm going to have Brad bring in a reflector. Now, I mentioned earlier you don't have to have an assistant with you in the studio, but if you did have an assistant with the studio, there are a number of places that you can have hold the reflector. Number one is you can just hold it right here because think of what the lights are doing. It's reflecting, right? It's a reflector. The light that comes off here, remember this side of her face would be in shadows, it's going to come back here and light that side of her face. That's what the reflector does. Other places to put a reflector, very common, to put them on the floor just to get a little bit, just lay it literally on the floor. Well, let's just go ahead and do that. Lay it literally on the floor in front of her to bounce up a little light back. Then that's when you're shooting more of a full length shot. Or what you might do is actually have, if you're shooting a head and shoulder shot, actually have your subject hold it. Can you hold this for me? Just like that and actually have them, that way the light comes right off here and comes right back into her face. And that's a very, very popular, I'll grab it back, thank you. So uh, that's a very, very popular way to use a reflector. Now, if you don't have a second person, a friend or somebody else helping you in the studio, what you can do is actually use a stand. So we have one over here. This is a very inexpensive stand. It's called an Impact is the brand name. But what it does is it just holds, it's got two clips on it. It has a clip here and a clip here. So it just holds your reflector. So what you can do is, now unfortunately it's turned to the gold side, so let's turn it around to the silver side because we wouldn't use gold in the studio. If I use the gold side in the studio, one side of her face would be white and the reflecting light would be yellow, which is bad. So let's just gonna move it in nice and tight on her like that. So that's where it's gonna go. And you can even see, watch Nellie's face as I bring this in, you can see it's kind of in shadows and then watch what happens as we bring it in. It brightens right up, except for when I kind of block the light. There we go. So I'm going to take two shots, one without the reflector and one with. So let's just move this out of the way, and then I'll have Brad bring it in for us. Let me grab the camera, and let's take a test shot first. Same setup, same camera setup, same lighting, same everything. Just we switched to the bigger soft box. We're at the 53-inch octa that we used earlier in the show. Shoot, everything else is pretty much the same. All right, let's get up. All right, you're gonna, now Nelly, after I take this shot, just hold the pose for just a second so Brad can get in there, we'll do the second one. Okay, here's the first one. All right, Braddo. And let's compare the two. All right, so look here, look at the shadows on the side of her face. And then here's the second one. It's almost like you put another light over there. That's what we call it an inexpensive second light because it just fills right in it. And it really did a nice job. This is more of a, again, kind of a classical type of portraiture, right? So this is, and neither Brad nor I, this is not really our favorite thing to do. We, we're, we don't use a whole lot of reflectors in the studio for side lighting. Where we will use them for is one of the main problems is opening up her eyes and making sure that there's lots of light in the eyes. So that's a place where we will use it a lot. So it's not as big a problem with this particular light because it pushes so much light, but let's do this, Brad. Can we remove this one from the set altogether? And then uh, can we have Nelly hold this one? the silver one. I'm going to have you hold it like I showed you earlier. If you'll just hold that, we're just going to do headshots. So, um, so Brad, but here's what I need you to do so we can show this to the viewers. I'm going to have you take it away, let me take the shot and then hand it back to her. But Nelly, I'm going to need you to hold it right up here. Okay? Alright, so here we go. Let me take a nice tight headshot. 
All right. And then go ahead and put the reflector in right there. Good. Don't move. Great. Let's take a look. Thank you. All right, so look at the difference of the, the, of the light on her face, especially look in her eyes. You can actually see a second catch light. When you shoot photographs of people, there actually is supposed to be that little white reflection of light in their eyes, whether it's from a light or from the sun or from a window or whatever. It's called a catch light. And uh, in this case, you'll see two catch lights, one where the reflector is, is up under. And if you need to get it higher, you move it a little bit higher. So now let's take this up a big, big notch. Let's say that we want to do more of a fashion look. So this is, we've been doing kind of a contemporary kind of, well, not a contemporary, excuse me, more of a classical portraiture look. So what we use are these big things. So Brad's back there grabbing what we call a V flat. These are very, very lightweight, seven foot tall flats. They are white on one side, black on the other. Where do you find these at? Well, the most expensive place to find them is what? Set shop in New York City, right? They'll, they'll, it's not them. The boards are how much a piece, Brad? They're 40, 50 bucks each. They're not very expensive, but the shipping will kill you. So here's what you do. Go to a local sign shop. They will have tons of these boards. Local sign shops, shops live on these. So we can go to a local sign shop and just order these. Ask them for, for don't call them V-flats. They will not know what they are. They become a V-flat because once you get two of them together, we put a piece of gaffer's tape from top to bottom to make a V. So if you want it to be, um, if you want it to be a cove where you could shoot into, you can use that. And there's all kinds of other, it, it stands up by itself. If you don't make a V, you have to hold it up with something. You have to have a stand back there, chair back there. There's all kinds of advantages to having the two of them taped together. Now I'm going to reposition this to just a second because here's what we're going to do. Why the big B flat? That? What's so great about them? They will bounce back a lot more light and they'll do it full length. So if I want to do more of a fashion look, there you go, Brad's going to change it to that one. Um, oh yeah, let me just help him with this real quick. Let's move it in tight. There we go. Kind of makes you feel a little claustrophobic, doesn't it? Kind of like you're in a tunnel, a little bit in the tunnel. All right, so um, now that's gonna bounce back a lot of light because we've been talking about a lot of fall off and all this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get down low, I'm gonna get down on one knee and I'm gonna shoot here and I might have to pull this light back just a little or you're gonna really be in a, it's gonna make you really claustrophobic there. All right, so now that I just moved the light, it might look funky, but well, we're gonna find out. Uh, let's go ahead and take a test shot while I'm still standing just in case I have to quickly move it. All right, <laughs> very nice. Okay, uh, let's see what it looks like. Okay, the lighting looks just kind of, kind of a little boring. There's, uh, the, the reflector's doing a good job of filling in the light. Look at her face, her whole face is now evenly lit. It's not the shadows before, but it's just not great looking lighting. So here's what I want to do. Uh, Brad, if you will, so I'm, I don't have to put all the tethering stuff over. Um, let's raise the light a little bit. And let's move it back a little. Since we're getting so much reflected, I'm sorry, when I want to say back, I'm sorry, uh, back that, uh, towards, there you go, thank you, sorry. And up just a little bit. Because we have that big reflector over there, I think we can get a little bit of shadow. And let's just try that. There we go. Oh, that looks good right there, Brado. Great, let's see. This, that should have changed the lighting pretty significantly. There we go, okay, see that? So the reflector's doing a pretty good job of, look at it, it almost looks like we put a light on her hair on the other side. That's how much it's actually showing up. So I'm just gonna change my angle a little bit. So we do, we'll do more, and I'm gonna actually move back a little bit. Hey, while we're talking about this, this is one thing we haven't talked about. How far back do you set up from your subject? I like to be, I like to have the subject about six feet from the background, from the white paper background that we're on, about six feet that way. And then I like to be, well, I shoot my camera way out here at 200 millimeter. We're gonna talk about that in the very next segment. But it's gonna cause me, because I'm using such a long lens, we'll explain why in a minute, to get back quite a ways to be able to do maybe a three quarter from maybe her knees up. I'm gonna to have to get back quite a bit. In fact, on the other side of the video light, the video team is now scrambling quickly. They're nimble, they're quick and nimble. So let's, uh, I know you thought I was gonna go into vanilla ice there, but I, did, I just stopped just short. All right, Nelly, you ready? All right, let me just get down. On two knees here, move my cable. Here we go. All right, there we go. This is a good angle. Nice, how's the lighting looking over there? All right, looks pretty good. Wow, that reflector is really doing a good job. All right, let's go ahead and take a few more. Let's, there we go. And then we're gonna back out just a little more. There we go, I'm backed out. 
All right, Nellie, can I have you take a, a little step towards the big wall, just a little bit over this way? There we go. Thanks, because I'm getting some of the uh, pole in the background there. All right, let's go ahead and do one more set real quick. Here we go. There we go. Great. Perfect, thank you. All right, you guys can see what a difference that makes. It really, now you can also see that when I'm composing, I'm actually getting the, the, uh, the wall board in a lot of the shots. So there's gonna be some cropping to do afterwards in Lightroom or inside of Photoshop because, well, you just don't generally wanna do that. You have to keep that in mind as you go forward. Now, in the next segment, we're gonna talk about lens selection. So um, that'll make some of the things I just talked about why I had to back up so far. Why am I using such a long lens in this kind of situation? We'll talk about that next.